Thank you all for coming. My name is Anand Srinivasan. I'm a senior tech analyst uh, here at Bloomberg Intelligence. Um, my colleague is Mandeep Singh, also a senior tech analyst uh, at Bloomberg Intelligence. We're a group of about 300 or so analysts providing data, believe it or not, um, and um, research and analytics on um, a multitude of industries um, on the Bloomberg platform for professional investors, corporates, a uh, ton of data, a ton of analytics on there. Uh, feel free to check it out. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the depth of data, the volume of data, and the uh, variety of data. Uh, Mandeep's going to do a, a, a state setting, if you may, talk, talk through a bunch of topics on that, on that issue. And then I, I come out for the fun stuff, which is uh, to talk about specifically use cases. Um, and with that, I will leave it to Mandeep. Great. Uh, thanks, Anand. So I want to start off with this slide simply because it puts everything in context. We hear a lot of buzzwords, trends, you know, big data, cloud, AI, blockchain. And I thought it was important to size up these markets just so that we know what we are talking about. So if you see on the slide, cloud is a little over $100 billion market. Big data is somewhere close to $50 billion. And all of the markets, uh, security is another big one, and AI and blockchain are relatively small. The point of this slide is that if you look at big data and cloud, these are the two established trends. If you look at the big data market, it's growing around 12 to 13%, which is two times the total IT spending growth. And we're talking about you know 1.5 trillion in IT spending, so it's much bigger number, but clearly, Everything is moving to cloud, and big data is one of the enablers of AI, blockchain, the new technologies. So it's important to keep the numbers in mind, and really the nexus of cloud and big data is what is driving a lot of the change. So if on this slide, you will see a lot of the big data growth will be on cloud. We are talking about uh, growth rates of 27%, which is four times the on-premise growth rates for big data. So Essentially, if you keep big data and cloud in mind, you're going to see a lot of disruption in the form of AI, in the form of newer technologies. Every, every mega trend, be it digital transformation or you, know, you name it, AR, VR, leverages some form of big data and cloud. So next slide. It, this essentially, when, when I talk about big data, I think it's important to put it in context that a lot of big data is generated from machines. And when I say machines, it's coming from sensor devices, it's coming from logs that are being generated by servers, it's coming from weather patterns, it's coming from, you know, you name it, uh, social media, stuff like that. So a lot of the data is machine generated and the relational database, which was essentially used for uh, the transactional data, doesn't work anymore for you know, the machine data that gets generated. So it's really important to see the trend around non-relational data, which is generated primarily from machines and feeds. And, and you can see the growth in, in non-relational data. And I'm not saying relational data will go away, but it's very important to keep in mind what big data is and where that data is being stored. And non-relational data is how it's getting sifted through, how it's getting searched. So uh, really important context uh, you know, with non-relational data. Now this actually shows the spending by vertical. So you're, you, you are going to see a lot of applications of big data in manufacturing and banking. And we have already seen that. That's what makes up that 50 billion you know, market. And just uh, you know, for the record, that 50 billion doesn't include services. So you have this entire services ecosystem built around that 50 billion you know, of big data products. So uh, manufacturing and, and banking are leading the way, but the other sectors are also heavy investors in big data. And finally, I mean, this kind of sums up what's happening with the data. Because of all this machine-generated data, you are seeing the data growing at 25%, which essentially means your data will keep you know, doubling every three years. That's what it means. And uh, uh, now we are talking about the importance of big data and how once you have large data sets, that is essentially the fuel for AI. 
So the other side of big data, I guess, one is that the amount of data generated continues to increase. The other is the cost of storage continues to go down. And we all know about Moore's Law. We keep hearing that. But this is, you know, uh, I mean, both on the SSD side, on the hard disk, the cost of storage goes down. And it makes sense, you know. It, it, that's what will drive this wave of innovation because you don't have to pay up for commodity storage. The other big trend is, uh, you know, servers. Uh, obviously, our chips are more powerful. There, are, there is diversity in, you know, the kind of servers that are available. Uh, you keep hearing about GPUs, so TPUs. Essentially, now we have servers for the kind of workload that, you know, we need the servers for. So we don't need to throw CPUs at everything. Uh, in, in case of, you know, autonomous vehicles, for example, there is a lot of graphic processing involved. And in that case, GPU is a much better uh, chip to use. So the point is that the server spending will increase. I mean, it will increase in line with the IT spending. But the accelerated server spending is the specialized servers that, you know, uh, GPUs and, and the TPUs, they are going to grow much faster. And then finally, on the edge side, obviously, edge is a very important aspect because you can't do everything on the cloud. It, when you look at server and just GPUs, TPUs, they, they will primarily be deployed on the cloud once that becomes the de facto platform. But on the edge, you need to do a lot of things on the edge, and, and autonomous vehicles being a big example of you know, how the edge is very important. So you need that kind of computational ability on the edge, and, and so that's going to drive a lot of analytics as well as the growth in chips uh, on the edge side. So, I thought this is really important just to understand, you know, uh, the whole wave around big data and cloud. At the end of the day, is to drive productivity, is to drive, you know, improvement in businesses. And how AI actually taps a lot of this data is machine learning works off of large data sets. We all know machine learning has been around for a very long time. But the reason why it's making such a big splash and impact now is because you have these large data sets, the big data sets that are being generated from logs, the sensors, the weather patterns, that can be fed into those machine learning algorithms for classification and just for prediction. So we have already seen that big use of AI in you know, banking, uh, fraud detection, and stuff like that in retail. I mean, Amazon's business is built around the recommendation system, is built off of big data. So Manufacturing is another big one. And healthcare, we think, I mean, based on our estimates, is going to be the next big sector where uh, the combination of cloud, big data, and AI can be really disruptive. Um, so moving on, uh, these are other uh, AI use cases, more horizontal than vertical. So you, you can see how chatbots and you know just uh, uh, video-based systems, recommendation systems, uh, the preventative maintenance systems. These are some of the examples of AI that are very popular. But what's enabling all this is this combination of cloud and big data and really the large data sets that companies are able to curate out of the machine data. That's what is driving that. And uh, the, uh, the next one, this is more voice based, but I, I think what I want to leave you, uh, you know, in terms of the combination of these technologies is cloud and big data are solving a lot of problems. And, and now uh, the way the problems are being solved is through AI. So when I see, you know, uh, we analyze a lot of companies, we analyze a lot of technologies, the biggest use of cloud, AI, and big data is in solving the security problem. And when I say security, it covers the gamut from you know, fraud detection to even companies which deploy security. They have to aggregate the user behavior. They have to contextualize everything. They have to figure out what, where are the anomalies. And looking at the relational database, the transactional data is just not sufficient. So that's where the non-relational data comes into play. And now, not only uh, is the big data, you know, the, the machine-generated data, it's actually the videos and the audios and the images. So that's where voice is on the rise. You look at all the surveillance videos that are being captured, you know, from different types of systems. 
and those, are be, those can be fed into a big data system. And you can actually uh, you know, glean insights, classify that video and the audio data. So very important, we think the next wave of growth, you know, given the deployment of these uh, devices, the Amazon Echo, Google Home, is gonna be on the voice side because there is a lot of being, uh, big data being generated out of the, those systems. And it's very important to capture that analyze that, classify that, and, and do some predictive analytics off of that. So with that, I'm gonna let uh, Anand talk about the cool uh, use cases around IoT, which is the other big application of uh, you know, big data, cloud, and AI. Thanks, Thanks. Mandeep. So again, to summarize what, what Mandeep talked about, big data is, is voluminous, big data has variety, big data coupled with cloud uh, can give us a tremendous amount of uh, insight, particularly when you put analytics and AI on top of it. But I haven't been ex this excited about earth moving equipment since I was five. <laughs> so this is why I say I come back for the cool stuff. So this is Caterpillar, okay? So how can Caterpillar, I watch through how large companies arguably slower moving companies. I mean, we have very distinguished company representatives in the room from Amazon to, uh, uh, to, to Uber uh, to uh, Google. My point is that we've seen all of the examples and perhaps we live those examples on a daily basis. But Caterpillar's example is, um, is interesting, uh, perhaps more down to earth. Um, and, and the point here is they, they have a system called Cat Connect, right? And here is, uh, they, they take into account data like from GPS, simplistic stuff, relatively simple stuff. GPS will help you uh, flatten out areas of earth that are in a, in a more accurate way. They will know where to dig more effectively. No more line markers, no more manual labor, perhaps dangerous labor in order to potentially flatten earth, dig earth, move earth, simplistic stuff. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is predictive analytics. Uh, a significant portion of CAT's business is on parts, okay? Now you would argue that predictive analytics, for them predictive analytics helps them prevent breakdowns. So their customers who are buying um, uh, Caterpillar's earth moving equipment can help them reduce breakdown, reduce um, time wastage, off time, et cetera. Now, one of the things that you could argue is, okay, if I'm a customer and this is going to help me replace parts, you can actually, without, you can avoid downtime. And that's the benefit for you. You don't have to wait on parts, uh, on a specialty part that's stuck on back order for several weeks at a time. As a result, you have more uptime with your parts. And if you're a contractor with, and you own this stuff, you can have higher utilization and you make more money. Uh, it's a very simple value proposition, but a very powerful one. Another example, EpiRock. Now, this is a, this is a twofold. Obviously, utilization is a big deal. Um, asset tracking is another part of it. Uh, efficiency uh, of, of your tools, uh, of the machinery, is, is, a, is yet another one. But one of the things that, that also is a big um, cost factor in a mine is, is labor, right? So to the extent that you can automate some of this stuff is, is valuable uh, and, it, and, and it helps save lives, helps um, uh, make the mining process more efficient and uh, more lucrative. So yet another example where um, heavy earth moving equipment, precision agriculture, yet another one where you can, uh, the row command technology can help you more efficiently till land. Uh, efficiently use less seeds for the same amount of land um, and have better yield, um, have uh, better efficiency of the use of equipment. So these are highly uh, different examples relative to what we've seen from Amazon, what we've seen from um, Alexa or Google. But again, seismic improvements and very lucrative as well for the client and for, for the company itself in terms of small adoption of what we would think as very simple technologies. So predictive analytics, again, on, on both uh, the new engines, which are loaded with more advanced sensors, which will tell you where perhaps shear is um, uh, unusual or where there is more wear and tear relative to a different part, helps you with replacement, helps you with better analytics, helps you with more uptime, 
less replacement time, less downtime. But also, uh, we saw the example with uh, the augmented reality where um, a, a, a technician can go in and potentially do checks on, on the wings, on the engine, simplistic checks on the engine, perhaps uh, avoiding a, a costly replacement um, later, later, uh, later in time. I, I want to close out with the fact that this is, uh, this is uh, incredibly valuable. Having this data at this volume of data, this variety of data, this depth of data at our fingertips, coupled with the technologies that we didn't have before, coupled with the cost of technologies falling as rapidly as they are, um, this is a, a pretty incredible convergence. It is allowing us to do stuff far more aggressively, far more effectively, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's lucrative across the board. Thank you all very much for your time, and there's more stuff on Bloomberg Intelligence. Thank you very much. and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Bloomberg's Gabrielle Coppola. Hello. Um, before we get to the next portion of our program, uh, we're going to have another poll for you. We want to hear from you. Um, first off, thinking about the auto industry, connectivity, automation, electrification are transforming this industry and it won't be long before the first self-driving car services go from being in the headlines to showing up in cities and on the streets. So please take out your clickers. We want to know what you think. When do you expect to see fully autonomous level five vehicles on public roads? So truly autonomous, not just highways, but can do everything just like a human driver. When would you expect to see that?